morning, saints. Good morning. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. 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 I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord, for my Lord. And I promised him that I, I would serve. Verse 4. Say amen when you have it, please. Amen. Amen. I'll be reading from the King James Version. My Bible reads as such. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Amen. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved thus ends the reading of his word may that a blessing to you amen amen, amen. would everyone please bow your heads and join in this prayer let us pray our father and our God we boldly this morning come before you asking for your blessings. And first, Father, I just say thank you. Thank you for being the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Thank you for being the God who stepped out of nothing and said, let there be, and there was. Thank you for being the Alpha and the Omega. Just thank you for being God Almighty. Thank you, Father, for what this this morning allows us to see another day, a day we've never seen before. Thank you, Father, for watching over us all, all through the past week, protecting us from danger, seen and unseen. Thank you for your safe passage to your house this morning. I ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that you forgive us of our sins, our trespasses, our misdeeds, and our shortcomings. Deliver us from all unrighteousness. Bless and keep our pastor and his family with good health and safety. And let him continue to follow you as he leads us. Bless and keep the mothers of the congregation of St. John, Father. Thank you for allowing us to come to your house once again to give you praise and worship. Bless and keep everyone who's on our prayer list. You know what each of them needs, Father, please provide it for them. Continue to bless and keep our friends, neighbors, and their families. Thank you for everything you do for them. Please continue to bless them. Now, Father God, I ask that you look in on those people locked up behind prison walls and jailhouse doors. Touch them, Father. Let them know they too can be saved by accepting your son, Jesus Christ. Bless those people in high places. Bring it to their remembrance that they too one day must answer to you. I ask now, Father, that you keep your hand on our children, Father. Continue to protect them. Keep them safe. Keep the predators away from them. Cover this church, Father. Keep that COVID away from all of us, Father. Let us continue, Father, to worship you. Now, Father, I ask once again, in the name of your Son, Jesus, that you forgive us of our sins. All our sins, past, present, and future. Father God, let us continue to grow in your word and become
become better disciples and Christians. All these things we ask you, your darling son, Jesus, and you, the Father. We thank you for everything you do for us. Please continue to bless us. We'll love, praise, and worship you forever and ever. Amen. 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 <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Uh, Brother Isaiah been saving up and working up to the day. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know why that is? That is because we are to make a joyful noise. Amen. Amen. Unto the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. I was glad I rejoice. I was overwhelmed with enthusiasm. Joy bells rang from the depths of my soul when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Responsive reading. Amen. Amen. Our responsive reading comes from the book of Ephesians, second chapter, verses one through nine, and this is the King James Version. Let us read responsively, please. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and whereby nature, uh, whereby nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, Even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And have raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. All together, for, for by grace, grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Our congregation of him of the morning, amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, blind, but now I see. in our lives. Amen. 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 I know what I used to be, but since the grace of God, I'm not what I used to be anymore. Amen. 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 Thank God for his amazing grace. Amen. Good morning, St. John. 
What a blessing it is to see your beautiful smiling faces behind the mask. Yes. Amen. Amen. We're grateful, God, that he has brought us safely through another week's journey. Yes. Amen. And we certainly acknowledge the fact that we're not here because of any good that we've done. Amen. We're here because of his grace. Amen. 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 We're not here because of our merit. We're here because of his mercy. Amen. Amen. God's grace and mercy brought us through. Yes. We're living this moment because of you. Amen. I want to thank and praise you too. Amen. Your grace and mercy brought me through. Amen. 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 We're grateful that God is the gracious and merciful God that he is, yeah. who continually looks beyond our faults and failures, though they be many. Yeah. Amen. And bless yeah. us according to our needs. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Certainly like to take this opportunity uh, to thank Brother, Brother Randall Thomas and uh, Brother Jonathan uh, Gatlin for coming over and mowing and trimming the lawn yesterday. Amen. Amen. Lawn looks, looks much better. Amen. Amen. But the much improved look. Amen. And we are grateful to God for the brethren who uh, took time out of their schedule to come over yesterday morning before it got too hot. Amen. And got it taken care of. Amen. Certainly one thanks us to Karenina Smith and, and, and the pastor for cleaning and sanitizing the church on yesterday. Amen for Sister Smith. Amen. 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 Certainly need to remind us that we certainly need to sign up, to show up, and to clean up the church each week because we need to keep it clean and disinfectant so we can keep COVID-19 on the outside. Amen. Amen. That got so good to Sister Smith yesterday. Uh, she even uh, disinfected and sanitized the handrails going out to the sidewalk. All the way out there. And she, she was wiping everything down. Amen. Amen. Now that's what I call looking out for us. Amen. Amen. Knock it out before it get here. Amen. Amen. Certainly want to thank the, the men who came out yesterday for the men's ministry meeting. Amen. Amen. Uh, we thank those men who uh, came and participated on yesterday for the men's ministry meeting. Uh, Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, 6 o'clock, uh, there will be teachers meeting. Uh, certainly, uh, if you are in town, amen, if you are in town, Amen. We look forward to seeing you uh, because we know some will be uh, traveling uh, to, uh, to to BC. And if you don't know what BC is, BC is Boston College. Amen. Amen. As uh, Brother Isaiah is getting ready to take wings. And fly away from among us to Boston College, where he will uh, begin his undergraduate studies. Amen. 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 Good place for us to fall. Amen. Amen. And you know, uh, uh, Boston College ain't no slouch college either. <laughs> Amen. I mean. No, no, no. And, and everybody can get into Boston College. Amen. And, amen. And we are grateful for uh, Brother Isaiah being accepted and uh, based on certainly grateful for all of his hard work and labors that he has put in uh, these 12 years uh, working up to this point uh, to where he can be accepted into Boston College. Amen. 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 Uh, certainly, uh, 
if, if there is uh, someone who would like to give some remarks at this time before I finish mine. All right, okay. They got over it. No, they didn't, didn't get over it, just didn't want to give any remarks. Okay, all right. Amen. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll move right along then. Amen. Uh, certainly, uh, due to COVID-19, the water dispenser that used to sit out in the foyer is no longer out there. We do have um, eight ounce and 16 ounce, 16.9 ounce bottles of water downstairs. Uh, should someone need water, we can certainly uh, provide you a bottle of water so you may quench your thirst. Uh, we only ask that uh, if you are an eight ounce drinker, don't get a 16.9 ounce bottle. Amen. 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 Get, just get what you can drink. <laughs> amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. 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 Right, you can drop and take take your bottle with you. <laughs> amen. Amen. And, and, and certainly, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I better not go back there. I've got to leave that alone. <laughs> Ain't that right, Dean Crossbow? <laughs> yeah, I better leave that alone. We'll, we'll move right along. Just, just get what you can train. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Um, if you haven't done so, please take the COVID-19 test. Get tested. Amen. You, you need to know if you, uh, you know, if you have COVID-19 or not. And uh, certainly, uh, we encourage you to please get tested if you have not done so. And testing is available at Test Nebraska, the Charles Drew Health Center, and the Red Cross. Amen. Amen. Certainly so want to remind everyone that uh, when you go out uh, into public gatherings, uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, please wear your mask. Please maintain your uh, minimum of six feet personal space distancing from other folks and um, if others try to crouch out you know uh, there's a sign out there when you're driving they're called a, a yield sign so please please yield or right away to them and if they're in that big a hurry let them go ahead on where they are going amen because you don't know what they might be carrying and and you certainly don't want to pick up something from somebody who rushing trying to crowd you in the checkout line Amen. Amen. Cause I know that I've, I've been out there a couple of times and, uh, you know, and had my distance and then folks come up behind me and, you know, you know, almost feel them breathing down your neck, you know. Yeah, please go ahead of me, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm not in that big a hurry. Amen. Yes, ma'am. So let them, and, you know, if they're in that big a hurry, please let them go. And, and certainly want to remind you, please, please uh, wash your hands uh, frequently. Amen. Amen. Because you don't want to pick up anything and uh, put it up um, and catch COVID-19 from your hands. Also, like to remind you, there will be fruits and vegetables available at um, Clare uh, United Memorial Church, this uh, Memorial Methodist Church, this Friday. Uh, and certainly we invite you to get there early. Uh, if you can, be there by 8 o'clock. Also, there will be uh, fruits and vegetables given out at Antioch again uh, this week over on 42nd Street. Uh, they're beginning their giveaway at 9.30. Also, want to remind us that yes, yes, you're right, we're back on schedule. Back on our regular weekly schedule. Amen. And we, we will be looking forward uh, to seeing everyone when you're supposed to be here. Amen. 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 Uh, also, like remind us that uh, the restroom up here in the sanctuary, off from the sanctuary, is for our seniors and those with uh, physical disabilities. All others, please uh, use the restroom downstairs. Thank you. Thank you. Also, like remind everyone, please register to vote and vote. Would encourage you, would encourage you, would encourage you to request a mail-in ballot, and when you receive it, fill it out, 
Don't mail it in. Take it to the election commission mission office and drop it off in their drop box. Amen. 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 Because uh, as, as you can see what is going on uh, with the mail, uh, it, it is a deliberate attempt to get people's vote not to count. All right. and, and we want our vote to count. We don't want to have to go stand in line with a bunch of folks and don't know what they might have. So as soon as you can, request your ballot, and when you get your ballot, fill it out, take it to the election commission's office, and put it in their drop box where you know it will be received in a timely fashion so it can be counted. Amen. Amen. Uh, and if you... Uh, if you can't get it there, uh, let us know. We will see to it that it gets there for you. Amen. Amen. Because we want your vote, we want our vote to count. Amen. Um, having said that, uh, talking about the postal service, uh, the fight that's going on against the postal service, uh, should anyone be interested, uh, the Bellevue Post Office is hiring for clerks to work inside the post office for city carriers and for rural carriers if you are interested in uh, going to work for the post office amen amen how many unsaved unchurched believers did you invite to accept jesus christ as their lord and personal savior this week again that is still our task our responsibility even in the midst of COVID-19, we still have a responsibility to evangelize. We are going to all the world and make disciples. And notice that is not conditional. When it does not say when the conditions are favorable, though, but it says go. So we are to be evangelizing every day. Not only that, but how many unsaved, unchurched believers did you invite to in St. John this week? We want St. John to grow. In order for that to occur, we need to invite others to come and be a part of the St. John family. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, God bless you. God keep you. Uh, before I sit down, uh, since this is your last Sunday with us, Brother Isaiah, uh, is there anything you'd like to share with us before on your preparing uh, to take wings and fly away. I guess the only thing that I would just you know like to say is just thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Um, you have all raised me from a little boy up until now. Uh, this, this church home has been my family and will continue to be my family even when I'm gone. And I'm looking forward to coming back and seeing all of your beautiful faces on Christmas break. Um, and just, I just thank you. I thank you for all the love that you have given me, you have given my family, um, because I would not be where I am without each and every one of you. And that is that is so true. You know, you have all, you have raised me, you know, and I just, I'm so appreciative of everything. I thank you. Amen. 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 We, we look forward to you coming back. Uh, Christmas break. Thanksgiving break. New Year's break. <laughs> amen, amen. The Valentine break. <laughs> amen. Spring break. Amen. Uh, any break you get. And uh, you can come back. I, I know we know it's not uh, cheap to travel, uh, but certainly uh, we would uh, welcome you back anytime you can. Uh, break away and come back amen amen amen, amen. And, and and once you uh have uh completed your degree uh, amen uh, it'll be a good place for you to come back amen again amen amen i'm i'm putting in request now amen i don't believe in waiting for the last minute to ask for something amen amen you be first on the list See, and sister, and sister Lord knows my heart's desire 
Amen. Amen. So now I'm going to see if, if, if the Lord, and if I can't, I'm not going to try to help the Lord work it out. I'm sure we're going to be praying that the Lord work it out. Amen. I know he don't need my help. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to stay out of his way, but I'm sure going to be pleading. Amen. 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 Uh, certainly, uh, it goes without saying, Brother Isaiah, that we love you. We appreciate you. Certainly, uh, we appreciate, uh, you know, all you've done with the music ministry. I have you taking that on. And, and uh, amen. How, how you've grown in the music ministry and how the music ministry has grown with you and growing. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I love it when you tickle the eye of me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, I, I like that every time I hear it. Amen. Amen. And we certainly appreciate you, uh, you know, taking on, uh, setting up our website and web page and getting that up and running and, and taking on being our IT uh, uh, guy and taking care of the sound system and all of that. Uh, and, and certainly, uh, working with the chair of choir and you know and everything that you've done we uh we appreciate it you know not to say that that's all that you have done we know you've done more than that but uh i'm gonna cut it off now so we can move a little further in the service and uh and, and we know that you know it's your last sunday because we can tell by the way you've been working it out this morning amen on, on, on the organ there amen amen Amen. Yeah, yeah. All fired up. Amen. Amen. We'll, at this time, we'll be blessed with a, uh, uh, another musical selection from the most magnificent music ministry. Amen. This side of hell. Amen. <laughs>
Amen, amen. As we come now to the altar of prayer, we are grateful to God for another day. Amen. We thank Him for keeping us through another week's journey, protecting us from dangers seen and dangers unseen. Even while we thought we were in the safety of our own homes, something could have happened to us while we were feeling secure in our homes. But because of God's protective hand being upon us, he protected us from what could have been, and he has kept us safe. So as we prepare to go to God in prayer, we thank him for who he is and thank him for all of his many blessings. Certainly as we go to God in prayer, we want to remember those who are absent from among us. Brother Kenneth Long, Mother Ada Young, Sister Charlotte Blue Kent. Certainly uh, there are many uh, others who are absent from us on this morning. Some who are absent due to being sick and shut in. And we want to remember them in prayer. Also, we want to remember in prayer uh, Brother Benny Ford Jr. Uh, received word from uh, Brother Wilder this morning that Brother Ford has been able to go home from the hospital. And certainly, uh, amen. Certainly, we praise God for his hand of healing. Because we know that uh, doctors can prescribe medication, but they cannot pre prescribe healing. Only the master has healing in his hand. Amen. And we thank him for his healing hand. Then there are those who are bereaved. There's the family of Sister Doris Collins. As the uh, family of Reverend Fred Dixon Sr., who passed away uh, last Sunday, and we certainly want to be in prayer for the Dixon family. Amen. Not only that, but we want to be in prayer for uh, Sister Shanita Ali and family. God is a miracle working God. Whatever we stand in need of, God is able to supply. Amen. And all his children have to do is but ask. Amen. Acts in according to his word. Ask in according to his will. And the Father will provide. Amen. Now as we prepare to go to God in prayer, we certainly, as we often say that, if you choose to sit in the pews, you may sit in the pews. If you choose to stand in the pews, you may stand. We know our physical posture does not determine our spiritual posture before the Lord. Amen. If you choose to kneel, you may kneel whatever you choose for your physical posture to be. We ask that you would join us now spiritually as we go to God in prayer. Eternal God and loving Father, we thank you, o Lord, for this another chance, another privilege, and another opportunity to call on your holy and righteous name. As we come, O oh God, we come thanking you because you've been mighty good to us. We thank you, O oh God, because we know that every good and perfect gift comes from you. And as we continually receive your blessings, uh, we don't want you to think that we are ungrateful for not one of your blessings. Because we know, oh God, that you have to look beyond our faults. 
Look beyond our failures in order to bless us according to our needs. We come thanking you that you saw fit to make us in your image after your likeness. We thank you for Jesus the Christ, your only begotten Son, who humbled himself even unto the death of Calvary's rugged cross, who was buried in a borrowed tomb. Then early on the third day morning, you raised him from the grave with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit who leads us, guides us, and directs us in the way that you would have us to go, who keeps us sealed until the day of redemption. Now, Father, we come today on behalf of those who are listed on our prayer list. There are those who are sick and shut in. You know, O oh God, each of them by name. And we pray and ask, O oh God, that you would allow your healing power to go their way, that you would touch and heal as only you can do, that when, oh God, they've received their healing, that they would have a testimony about your goodness, about your love for them, and your healing power in their lives. Then, Father, there are those who are bereaved today. There's the Dixon family, there's the Collins family, there's the Cherry family. We pray and ask, O oh God, that you would turn their tears of sorrow into tears of joy. And not only them, but all those who are bereaved, touch them and let them know that you are a great comforter and that they who die in the Lord shall live again. Then, Father, for Sister Shanita Ali and the Ali family, uh, you know what their situation is. And we pray and ask, O oh God, that you would intervene in their situation, into their circumstances, that you would do that which will bring glory, praise, and honor to your name. And then, Father, when it's all said and done, they would tell the world what a good God you are. And not only them, O oh God, but all of those who are listed on the prayer list, you know their individual needs. And we pray and ask, oh God, that you would intervene in each situation, in each circumstance, and bless according to your will and your purpose. Now, Father, we ask your blessings upon the President of these United States. Please, Lord, touch his heart. Please touch his mind. And please touch his spirit. We ask, O oh God, that you would give him the will to do your will and not to seek his own personal agenda. That he might seek to do that that will minister to your people and that will bring glory, praise, and honor to your name. Not only him, but all those who are in positions of leadership Touch hearts, minds, and spirits, O oh God. They, they would seek to do that which is pleasing and acceptable in your sight. But one day they too must stand before the righteous judge, giving a stout count of their stewardship, the deeds that they do in their bodies, whether they be good or whether they be evil. Now, Father, we ask your continued blessings upon the worship experience this day that you, O oh God, would continue to allow your Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us, and direct us in all that we say and all that we do. We pray and ask, O oh God, that the music ministry would be a sweet-smelling savor that some heart and soul might be touched and ministered to through the singing of the songs of Zion. Then, Father, for your preached word, we pray and ask that your word will go forth. And if there be any present that know not Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins, that the convicting power of your Holy Spirit will cause them to repent of their sinful deeds and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. Then, Father, 
For those of us who already know you, we pray and ask that as a result of this worship experience this day, we'll be better service for you going out than we were when we came in. Now, Father, we ask your blessings upon the St. John Missionary Baptist Church family. You know our individual needs. You know our collective needs. Bless us, O oh God, that we might be the brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, that you call out of a world of darkness into your marvelous light to be, so that when lost men and women, boys and girls, look at us, they will see Jesus Christ in the way we live, in the way we move, and in the way we have our being. Then, Father, when life as we know it will come to an end, but we want not to study war down here no more. We pray and ask that you would meet us in that day and in that hour. We'll be able to hear your welcoming voice say, Servant of God, well done. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on home now. I will make you ruler over many. These and all of our blessings we ask. In the name of our living. In the name of our loving. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, let the saints of God say together, Amen, Amen, amen. amen. and amen. 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 Let us prepare now for the ministry of giving. Amen. 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 Let us read that together in unison, please. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Ye say, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with the curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive them. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. 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 If you did not have opportunity to place your tithes and offerings in the tithe and collection box on your way as you enter the sanctuary, we ask that you please do so as you exit the sanctuary. Amen. 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 <laughs> Certainly want to uh, thank all of those who are unable to uh, physically worship with us, who are spiritually worshiping with us online. And we thank you for your tithes and offerings that you are sending through Giveify and that you are giving us, sending in through the mail, those that you are sending in by other members of St. John. Amen. We thank you for all of your continued support of St. John. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your finances. And certainly, we especially thank those who graciously give over and above their tithes and offerings to the building fund. Amen. 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 We thank you for your sacrificial giving. Amen. 
Amen. And since God loves the cheerful giver, amen. amen, amen, he says that he will abundantly bless amen. the cheerful giver. Amen. amen, amen. This time we'll be blessed by another musical selection by the greatest, most magnificent, <laughs> most melodious music ministry this side of heaven. Amen. 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 St. John Missionary Baptist Church Music Ministry. Amen. Amen. Amen.
passing over. Say hallelujah. You can say hallelujah because God is causing the storm to pass over. And because God is at work in the storm causing it to pass over, you can say hallelujah, which is the highest praise. Amen. And that's what God is due. God, God is not due uh, small praise. No, no. God is not due little praise. Mm -hmm. But God is due the highest praise and all praise. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's, it's, it's due uh, to God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We solicit your prayers this morning and ask that you would certainly uh, pray with us and pray for us. Let us bow in a word of prayer. All wise, eternal God and Father, as we approach the hour of the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus the Christ, we acknowledge, O oh Lord, our unworthiness to handle your word. We pray and ask, O oh God, that you would please empty me of self and make me a fit vessel to be used by you. Please, Lord, think with my mind. Please love with my heart. And please speak with my tongue that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you sent it forth to do. Please, Lord, hide me now behind the shadow of the cross of Calvary that your people might see none of me, but all of thee. That the name of Jesus Christ may be glorified. That the body of Christ may be edified. So we gladly give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. I'd like to prayerfully call your attention this morning to the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses 10 through 13. That's the book of Philippians. The fourth chapter, verses 10 through 13. Amen. Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses 10 through 13. I will be reading from the New King James Version. It reads, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things 
through Christ who strengthens me. I'd like to use for thought for your prayer for consideration the believer's power. The believer's power. The Apostle Paul is believed to have penned this letter around 61 or 62 AD. And when he penned this letter, uh, Paul finds himself in a Roman prison. This is believed to be his first prison epistle or the first letter that he writes during this prison stay. As Paul is in prison, uh, Paul is under house arrest. And being under house arrest, we discover that Paul has an ankle monitor on him. His ankle monitor is a Roman soldier that is chained to him. And, and, and it's interesting now that Paul finds himself in prison, but while Paul is in prison, Paul has a captive audience. You see, Paul, this, this apostle of Jesus Christ, this, 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 this preacher uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is chained to this, to this soldier. Supposedly, Paul is a prisoner of Rome, but Paul describes himself as a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Paul classifies himself as a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ because Paul has surrendered his will unto the Lord's will. He has surrendered his way unto the Lord's way. Paul understands that the Lord is his master and he is his commander and chief. And since the Lord is his master and his commander in chief, Paul finds himself in prison because of the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, as Paul is in prison, you, you would think uh, that, that Paul would take this as an opportunity to throw himself a pity party. You know, when, when, when things don't go the way we want them to go, when, when, when things don't happen like we want them to happen, when unexpected circumstances pop up in our lives that throws our schedule completely off, we hasten to throw ourselves a pity party. That's just human nature. But, but Paul would have us to understand that in the baseball game of life, you're going to be thrown some curveballs. Yeah, yeah. Some balls that you can't hit. You're going to be thrown some split-fingered fastballs in this game called life. And Paul writes this letter to the church at Philippi because during his imprisonment uh, he received a gift from the believers the believers at Philippi and this gift is believed to be sent by a fellow by the name of Epaphroditus and he brings this gift to Paul and as a result he and Paul has conversation. Now, uh, the church at Philippi, or the Philippian church, uh, is believed to have been organized by Paul during his second missionary journey. And we discover that Paul has a special affection for this church. 
And he writes this church because he hears about what's going on in the church. He received word uh, about the church and Paul knows them. He knows that one thing about this church is that it is a poor church. It is a church that is materially and monetarily poor. But yet and still, Paul tells us that this church at Philippi sent gifts unto him when other churches didn't send gifts to him. This church made sacrifices in order to support the ministry and the minister that was performing the ministry. They sent him gifts, and, and, and Paul tells us here in, in, in verse 10, he says, now, he says, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly. He says that now at last, your care for me has flourished again. In other words, they had taken up another gift, another offering, and sent it to Paul. Paul is thanking them for their gift. And he says to them, he says, uh, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. In other words, uh, they wanted to send Paul the gift, but they didn't have the gift to send him. So they lacked opportunity to send him a gift, but when they could send him a gift, they, they got it together and they sent Paul a gift. Paul says to them, he says, uh, he says that you have sent me this gift. He says you lack opportunity. He says, not that I speak in regard to need. Paul said, I'm not talking about I need something from you. I, I didn't need anything from you, but you sent me something anyhow. And, then, and Paul is thanking them for sending him a gift. Paul understood their condition. Paul knew that uh, this was a group, a congregation that was in trouble uh, from persecution. And that's found in verse uh, chapter 1, verses 28 through verse 30. Not only were they a poor church, not only were they in danger of persecution, but we also discover that uh, in danger also because if they wasn't already there, they were on the verge of having quarrels and dissension among them. Not only that, but it appears from Paul's letter that uh, apparently they were inclined to spiritual pride and jealousies. So as a result, Paul writes this letter to them because it was grieving his spirit to see this young church, these young believers that he had put so much time in and invested his life and his work and his ministry into and he wanted to see them uh, flourish in the ministry. So he says unto them, he says that uh, uh, not that I speak in regard to need, for I've learned in whatever state I am to be content. Paul says that uh, life's situations has taught him how to be content. Now, being content uh, does not mean that you are content at being where you are from now on. Being content means that you are content with how things are right now, uh, but you're going to strive in order that things might be better in the future than they are right now. You see, none of us should get uh, take our seat on the seat of satisfaction. Because if we take a seat on the seat of satisfaction, 
we will find ourselves moving from the seat of satisfaction to the stool of do nothing. And you see, when we become too contented with ourselves, uh, we start thinking that we have arrived. But you see, no matter where we find ourselves, we are never going to reach what God would have us to reach down here to his fullness because uh, the fullness that God wants us to reach is to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. Okay. And, and, and as we live, move, and breathe down here, we can only get so close to looking like Jesus. And even with the Holy Spirit working within us, uh, looking at what the Holy Spirit has to work with, he can only do so much with us down here. So he has to take us to that point to where he, is. he removes us from down here and he finishes the work in us uh, and then we receive our glorified bodies. So Paul tells us, he said, I've learned to be content in whatever state I find myself in. Paul wants us to understand that there, as we live down here, we go from state to state. We don't stay in the same state because our situation changes from time to time. And when our situation changes, we ought to be prepared to deal with the change of our situation. He goes on to tell us here, he says, when we look at verse 13, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, when we look at the believer's power, we have to understand that the believer's power is, first of all, can-do power. Because Paul says, I can do. For the believer, it is never, I can't do. For the believer, it's always, I can do. Why? Because Paul says that as a believer, we have can-do power. Not only do we have can-do power, uh, he says we have, the believer has all things power. We have all things power because in all things, we have the power to do what it is we need to do. And the reason why we have can-do power and the reason why we have all things power it is because the believer has through Christ power. You see, it is the through Christ power that empowers us with can-do power. It is through Christ power that empowers us with all things power. That's the reason why power says to us that he was able to be content in whatsoever state he found himself in. Because he had can-do power. He wasn't going to let his state that he found himself in, being chained to a Roman soldier, was not going to deter Paul. You know, Paul could have been sitting around feeling sorry for himself. But Paul wasn't concentrating on himself. He thought about the Philippian believers. I discovered that when you are going through something, if you stop focusing on your troubles, you stop focusing on your problems, and start focusing on your through Christ power, if you focus on your all thing power, if you focus on your can do power, no matter what you are going through, it will not cause you to throw a pity party, but you will throw a praise party because you have through Christ's power. And you know that you know that you know that you know that Christ is your Savior 
and you know that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you, and you know that your God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus, you have no reason to throw a pity party, but turn your pity party into a praise party. Start praising the Lord for who he is. Start praising God for what he has done. When you stop focusing on what you don't have, start focusing on who you have. Start focusing on whose you are. Start focusing on your blessings that the Lord has given to you. When you focus on the Lord, when you lift your eyes up from your trouble, when you lift your eyes up from your pain, when you stop focusing on your condition, when you lift your eyes up instead of down, when you look up to the hills from whence cometh your help, when you focus on your helper, when you focus on the one who woke you up in the morning, when you focus on the one who started you on your way, when you focus on the one who went to Calvary's cross, who died for your sins, who hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour, yeah. who gave up the ghost, who said, Father, it is finished. And in thy hands, I commend my spirit, who died on Calvary's cross, who stayed in the grave all night Friday, all day Saturday, all night Saturday night, but early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, right early Sunday morning, Jesus got up, got up from the grave, all power, heaven and earth in his hands. When you focus on the one who has all power, in heaven and earth in his hands, focus on how good he is, focus on his love, that he loved you enough to die on Calvary's cross as payment for your sin. He loved you enough to go into a grave and to stay there for your sin and to stay there three days and early on the third day morning. He loved you enough to get up from the grave with all power, heaven and earth in his hands. When you focus on the prince, the prince of peace, you don't have to worry about your problems. Don't worry about your trouble. Don't worry about your cares. Cause he cares for you. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my Savior. My Lord and my Master. He cares for you. He doesn't want you to go around with your head hung down. Lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. And being he lifted up, the everlasting God and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. He is the King. He is the King of glory. If you call on him in the midst of your trial, call on him in the midst of your trouble. He will show up. He will come to your aid. He will come to your rescue. Turn it over to him. He will work it out. He's an old time God. Yes, he is. He's an old time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when you want him to come. But whenever he shows up, he's right on time. He's on time. I tried it for myself. He showed up right on time. In the midst of my trouble, he showed up. In the midst of my pain, he showed up. In the midst of my sorrow, he showed up. 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 Have you tried it? Won't you show up? Won't you show up? Make the Lord all right. Make it all right. Make it all right. Thank you, thank you. Yes, Lord. 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 
I look forward to all of the ministries ministering, and uh, and certainly uh, that goes likewise for anointed steps. Amen. 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 Well, there's anointed steps, senior edition, or anointed steps, junior edition. Amen. 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 So we're going to be looking forward uh, to your anointed steps. Amen. 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 As, 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 as we uh, prepare to go, uh, certainly uh, we want to, uh, before we dismiss, we, uh, well, let's let, let, let the church say amen. Amen. <laughs> Say amen. God is spoken. So let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church. Amen. Amen. All wise, eternal God and Father, we thank you, Lord, for the honor and the privilege to come into your house, to gather in your name, to worship you. We thank you, dear Father, for the presence and power of your Holy Spirit and how he has manifested himself in this place this day. Father, we came to worship, now we leave to serve. Help us to be better servants when you're going out than we were when we came in. Now, Father, as Brother Isaiah prepares to take wings and fly from among us to Boston College. And we pray in excellent oh God that your spirit and your hands will be upon him. Protect him in his travels. Protect him, O oh God, in his arrival. Protect him during his stay at Boston College. Then, Father, we ask that you would allow your spirit to energize his memory, to energize his thinking, to energize, oh God, him as he prepares to study, that he might uh, equip himself, that he might be a productive member of society. We pray and ask of God that you would bless him with everything that he stands in need of. We know, oh God, that as he goes to BC, to Boston College, that he has another BC who is a big Christ. Right. A Christ who is big enough yeah. to supply his every need. Yeah. Help him always to remember to seek you first yeah. in all that he does. Yeah. Help him to remember his upbringing and his teaching how he has been trained up in the way that he should go. Yeah. And now that he's reached this age, that he should not depart from his training. Yeah. Helping to be mindful of his biblical roots yeah. to always study and put your word in his heart yeah. and always to live by your word. Yeah. Help him to always seek your will for his life. Amen. That he might seek to do that which is pleasing and acceptable in his, uh, your sight. Yeah. Now, Father, for his family, as he prepares to leave his family, uh, we know, oh God, that there is going to be a, an aching feeling in the heart, especially of his mother, yeah. as she and he and the family go through separation anxiety because the inability to physically reach out and touch one another. Yeah. Uh, we know, oh God, that you are able to close the gap yeah. between them because your spirit abides in him and your spirit abides in them. Yeah. And we know, oh God, that your spirit reaches out and touches itself himself as he dwells in each believer. So we pray and ask, O oh God, that you would give the family the comfort and the assurance of knowing that everything is already all right. 
because you are in charge. Yeah. And when you are in charge, nothing can go wrong. Yeah. That day, oh God, will gladly give your name the glory, honor, and praise for what you do in their lives. Yeah. Now, Father, for the St. John Missionary Baptist Church, as we will be missing Brother Isaiah, we pray and ask, oh God, that you would help us through this period of separation anxiety. And that as soon as possible, that you would reunite, reunite us all back together again. For we might fellowship one with the other. We know you can, and we're trusting that you will. Because we're not asking in our name. But we're asking in Jesus' name. Yeah. The name that which every knee shall bow, yeah. every tongue confess, yeah. that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yeah. In Mary's baby's name, yeah. in the name of him who hung, bled, and died yeah. on Calvary's rugged cross, who was buried in a borrowed tomb, and whom you raised on the third day morning, with all power in heaven and earth in his name. It is in his name we act it all. Let the saints of God say together. Amen. Amen.